hi guys welcome to my channel if there is no anode there is no corrosion based on this principle we are going to learn the how metal can be protected by using cathodic protection so this is the fourth video in corrosion so you can see all my previous videos in my channel uh, the corresponding link was provided in the description so first of all who involved in corrosion so we already learned in previous sessions which metal having a higher oxidation potential so higher oxidation potential having metal obviously involved in oxidation reaction oxidation is nothing but lose of electrons so the metal who loses electron act as anode at anode oxidation takes place that metal only involved in corrosion and finally it destroyed so if you observe the decreasing order of oxidation potential so of the sum of the metals so magnesium having a higher oxidation uh, oxidation potential than the zinc and zinc having a higher oxidation potential than the iron like that sil uh, silver having the higher oxidation potential than the gold gold is having least oxidation potential among the showing metals okay so ha au having lower oxidation potential that mean it having a higher reduction potential why because oxidation potential is equal minus reduction potential if a metal having a higher oxidation potential the same metal having the lower reduction potential so always at anode oxidation takes place oxidation is nothing but corrosion so who involved in oxidation they only involved in corrosion so always anodes involved in corrosions the best way to avoid divorce is not getting married just for a joke so if you not involved in marriage system you never get divorce okay like that be, uh, taking this as example we can explain the corrosion if a metal doesn't act as anode it never involved in corrosion if a metal doesn't involve in co uh, corrosion means it it should not be like a anode but most of used metals are anodes like iron magnesium zinc these are the most used metals these are these are a ha having anodic nature then how can we protect these anodic metals from corrosion so can we convert these anodic metals to cathodes so one of the ways if you convert the anodic materials to cathodic metals we can prevent the corrosion why should we convert anodic to cathodes so why should anodes always involved in corrosion anodes involved in oxidation but cathodes involved in reduction the metal which involved in reduction doesn't involve in corrosion that's why we need to convert all anodes to cathodes we need to convert which metal we need to prepare we need to protect that metal should be converting as a cathode so this can be done by cathodic protection so what is cathodic protection a metal which has to be protected generally the metal which have be protected is called base metal that base metal should be forced to convert as a cathode thereby corrosion does not occur so if you want to protect a metal that metal is called base metal generally it has some anodic nature so if it is has anodic nature it obviously involved in corrosion so you need to convert that anodic material into cathodic metal by applying some forces this method is called cathodic protection when you convert anodic metal into cathodic metal cathode always involved in reduction that that's why it's it's never involved in corrosion okay so there is a two ways to convert anodes to cathodes by cathodic protection one is sacrificial anodic method another one is impressed voltage methods okay you can see the figure so there is a anodic pot and cathodic pot is there always anodic pot only involved in corrosion anodic pot only involved in oxidation Let's see the first method in the cathodic production. That one is sacrificial anodic cathodic production. This is also called galvanic production. I will explain why this name is termed for this method. Sacrificial anodic method or sacrificial anodic cathodic production. So, for example, if you put a iron metal in the earth crust, there is a moisture is there. Iron having a higher oxidation potential. That's why this iron act as an anode. It involved in corrosion. Okay, 
but this is the base metal we want to protect this base metal so what i am what i can do if i put a magnesium metal near to iron metal and these two metals are connected with a external wire connected with a conducting wire so now magnesium and iron is there two different metals is there and moisture is there we already studied bimetallic corrosion or galvanic corrosion when two different metals are connected each other which metal having higher oxidation potential in the two metals that metal involved in corrosion that metal involved in oxidation if you see the decreasing order of oxidation potential magnesium having higher oxidation potential than the iron so now magnesium act as a anode now magnesium act as a anode and iron previously it is, it is acting as a anode now because of magnesium this iron is now onwards acting as a cathode so who involved in corrosion always anode involved in corrosion magnesium loses electron that means magnesium loses electron that electrons travel through the external wire so magnesium involved in corrosion iron act as cathode why because it is accepting electron from magnesium that means reduction reduction takes place always at a cathode that's why iron now onwards acting as a cathode by keeping very active metal than the base metal near to the base metal and connecting to the external wire making anodic base metal into cathodic base metal this is method is called sacrificial anodic method so you can see zinc or magnesium being highly anodic than the iron so if you see the uh, mm, decreasing order of the oxidation potential magnesium and zinc having higher oxidation potential than the iron for example if you want to protect the iron metal you can connect with magnesium either magnesium or zinc both are act as a anodes than the iron so they have highly active highly active mean they have higher oxidation potential and they involved in corrosion iron will be protected but if you observe here so here magnesium rod is there magnesium rod is connected with the iron base metal this is the base metal we want to protect this base metal so the iron if magnesium involved in corrosion it act as anode involved in corrosion it loses electrons and it, it the electrons taken by the iron involved in corrosion involved in reduction okay so now magnesium involved in corrosion slowly itself it destroyed so after some days after some months or, or after some years the magnesium black totally involved in corrosion and totally destroyed so if once iron if once the magnesium metal totally disappear so no now who involved in corrosion again iron itself lonely uh, lonely staying there that mean iron itself act as again act as anode so it again involved in corrosion so this is the one of the biggest problem in this method so if connected active metal continuously involved in corrosion it's it's totally destroyed off someday okay so we need to check whether it is the active metal is there or not periodically we need to check the presence of the active metal or not again if the active metal is totally involved in corrosion we need to replace with a new block okay these two are the disadvantage of this method so generally this method is used to protect the underground cables and pipelines okay underground pipelines that that mean the pipelines which uh, which is carrying the water oil and different type, type of substance liquid substance we are using underground pipelines if the underground pipelines are damaged by the corrosion so drinking water will be polluted or oil it, uh, fuels will be a leak and it leads to explosive so because of that this method is very important they can be protect the underground pipelines okay so but there is a two disadvantages is there next one is cathodic production in the in the cathodic production next one is impressed voltage method so it are impressed current cathodic production so we know releasing of electron is equal to oxidation if a metal releases electron it involved in oxidation if a metal gains electron it involved in reduction so in the previous method magnesium or zinc releasing electron they involved in oxidation and our base metal iron accepting electron that mean it involved in reduction okay so if metal involved in reduction we can Pre prevent the corrosion of that metal so 
in previous method magnesium or zinc providing electrons to the base metal that can be done by using external battery or dc battery so if you connect base metal with a battery so this is our base metal and we want to protect this iron rod so this is the iron rod and we want to protect this iron rod from the corrosion this is the base metal now base metal should be act as cathode if you not connect with the anything it will act as anode but it should not act as anode it should be act as a cathode so you need to connect this base metal to battery negative terminal so when you connect battery negative terminal from negative terminal electrons flow from battery to base metal will happen so so now base metal accepting electron by the battery so previously base metal accepting electron from the magnesium or zinc metal instead of magnesium and zinc metal now we are sending electrons from the battery so so it is accepting electron that's why it is act as cathode another thing is if base metal voltage is 10 electron per hour for example it releasing 10 electrons per hour why because it is already it is a anodic metal it has a naturally tendency to lose electrons okay it losing 10 electrons per hour so when to protect the base metal you need to send more than 10 electrons from the battery per hour for example if you send 20 electron per hour what is the total net value here it losing 10 electron that means minus 10 and it gaining 20 electron that means plus 20 electrons totally it gaining 20 electron sorry it gaining 10 electrons so totally it is gaining gaining 10 electrons gaining mean reduction so base metal involved in reduction but if it is losing 10 electrons but you only sending 5 electrons only what will happen minus 10 plus 5 again it losing minus 5 that means it's still losing 5 electron it's still involved in oxidation it's still involved in corrosion that's why you should send impressed voltage more than the base metal voltage that is called impressed voltage that's why it is called impressed voltage method so excess electrons will be Mm, collected by the graphite anode graphite anode is in a anode it is only act as a conducting metal so it uh, it accepts the excess electron in the earth crust and it is reaches to the battery and closes the circuit so this is the method this method generally used for the large structures for long term operations so it can be used for large structures for a, in a large time of large time period why because here no need to check whether magnesium or zinc type metals is there or not no need to replace why because we are operating from the earth surface from the home or from the office so whether electricity is there or not only question so if the electricity is there if you continuously passing electricity metal should be protected until unless the supply of electricity is switched off okay so that is in our control we can we can maintain the continuous electricity flow to the base metal by that we can protect the metal so i have a question for you i have a az metal silver metal is there with me so i want to protect silver metal so which combination which connection of the following metals will protect the silver metal i have a zinc metal iron metal copper metal and au metal so which connection makes the silver protect from the corrosion if i connected with the gold if i connected with the gold so now silver and gold which act as anode and which act as cathode so for that you need to remember or memorize the decreasing order of oxidation potential if you see here silver having higher oxidation potential than the au that's why here silver act as anode and au act as cathode so who involved in oxidation always anode involved in corrosion so ag metal involved in corrosion corrosion mean it should not be protected that's why this connection is not work okay you should not connect au to protect az if you want to protect au you can connect az but if you want to protect az you cannot connect au okay so next option is cu copper metal so when I connect to the copper metal, you can see here copper having higher oxidation potential than the AU. Copper act as anode and our AZ metal act as cathode. So this connection 
could save the silver metal from the corrosion why because you connected most active metal sorry active metal than the silver that's why it is act as anode and our base metal act as cathode it will be protected from the corrosion so same way zinc and iron also having higher oxidation potential than the silver so these two connections also protect the base metal next question is uh, these three metals connection will protect the metal and the last one az metal is not protected the base metal so this is ruled out so we are now no need to talk about this one in these three metals zinc iron copper which metal effectively protect the silver metal zinc iron copper both the three metals are protecting the base metal but which metal effectively protect the base metal so here zinc having higher oxidation potential than the iron and copper so if you connect the zinc metal it has high tendency to releasing electron it always forcibly acting as a anode so our metal should be act as a cathode always it protected from the corrosion so which having higher oxidation higher oxidation potential that will give the best results to protect the base metals so this is a today topic and uh, from this we learn the sacrificial anodic method and impressed voltage method here anode itself involved in corrosion so by sacrificing itself to protect the base metal that's why it is called sacrificial anodic method so this is the one example for the cathodic production if you add this word also here it will become so sacrificial anodic cathodic method so our galvanic protection okay so remember it like this another method is there in the surface coating i will explain in the later sessions both will be having same type of names but concepts are different so next one is impressed voltage method so here impressed mean we need to pass more voltage than the base metal voltage okay so i already explained it so this is the topic for today so please subscribe my channel and watch and subscribe watch and comment if you, if you have any doubts or any questions in my comment box so thank you for watching